After cleaning out my old bedroom, I found my entire collection of bootleg DVDs that I used to watch as a kid. I'm going to watch all of them and rate them on Letterboxd to find out which one is my favorite. Hello everybody, the name's Ari, and welcome to my bootleg collection. Catch That Kid is a 2004 heist movie starring Kristen Stewart, Corbin Blue, and Max Theriot. This was actually my first time seeing Kristen Stewart and Corbin Blue in any movie before they went on to star in Twilight and High School Musical, respectively. This is a movie that I don't remember that well, so this is basically going to be me watching it for the first time again. You can tell it's a bootleg because the DVD is called New. Whoever made this didn't even bother labeling it. I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't have bothered labeling it either. Alright, this is 2004's Catch That Kid. The movie begins with Maddie trying to climb a building and nearly falling to her death while also trying not to get caught by her mom. Hello, Madeline. What are you doing? Uh... Why? Homework. Over spring break? You're not climbing, are you? So you know I don't want you to be climbing. I better. No, Mom, I'm not climbing. Gus breaks a go-kart that he was trying to fix, and Austin is filming the go-kart race at their local track. Gus's brother, Brad, gives the gang some super subtle foreshadowing. Oh, hey, uh, I don't know if you heard, but bad Chad picked up a ship to your mama's bank. I'll be working with Lieutenant Farrell and security. Maddie's dad is a mountain climber and runs the family's go-kart track, and Maddie's mom has been busy trying to finish installing the security system at the bank she works for. She tries to tell her boss, Mr. Brisbane, that the security system isn't ready yet, and oh, do you hear that sound, guys? It's time to fill out your villain bingo cards! inform you that due to the age of the building that we The primary shareholders will be here for the opening of the bank next Friday night. This is one of the most complex Hartman! Don't tell me how to run my bank, alright? You work for me, remember? Now, when I turn around, both of you will be gone. Aw, oh, come on. I was supposed to get a bingo. The movie then takes a really dark turn. When Maddie's dad becomes paralyzed after surviving a mountain climbing accident, the doctor tells him that the surgery is going to cost $250,000. And what's with these shots? The movie is trying to be serious and then there are these weird shot reverse shots. The DV menu is dizzying enough. Can you keep the camera still for one second? Mr. Brisbane won't give them a loan because he's a heartless bastard, so they're out of luck. And one for the bingo cards? Her dad's fine with it and he's happy that he's still alive and able to be with his family. But Maddie is still determined to help. Maddie then gets some exposition from her mom's laptop about the bank's security features and gets the worst idea ever. Well, come on, we can't rob a bank. Why didn't they do a fundraiser? Her family owns the go-kart track. The track is clearly very popular and everyone seems to like her dad. They could have just ran a fundraiser, put an ad in the paper for people to donate to her dad. Austin and Gus even offer to sell some of their stuff to help her. We'll go door to door. Everyone loves your dad, they'll give us money. I can sell my camera. I have a coin collection. They're rare. It just seemed like so much work. This will be much less complicated. Anyway, the gang decides that it's the only way and they prep for the heist. Maddie visits the bank with her mom. Gus goes to get a floor plan for the bank and modifies the go-karts from the track. Are you freaking nuts? You can't You can't get four plates to <laughs> broke me, man. <laughs> and Austin goes to a dog trainer to learn how to control the bank's guard dogs. How is nobody suspicious of her? She asks her mom to take her to the bank, and she asks very specific questions. Can I see the safe? Can I see the new safe? Who has the code to all these? 
When I ask my parents a bunch of questions, they immediately think I'm up to something. Why else would you be asking so many questions? Gus gets a model of the bank from the architect after pretending that the burn from his arm is from his stepdad. We then get some Expedia product placement. Wait, the kids have money to flee to Copenhagen, but not enough money to promote a fundraiser? Okay, never mind, never mind. It's a kid's movie. Logic is a myth. I'm skipping through this next part of the movie because it's pointless. Onward to the heist. And also my favorite character in the movie. Farrell is the best character in the movie. Lesson one, Chad. Never take your eyes off the enemy. The gang breezes through the security since their go-karts are small enough. And cue suit-up montage. Even though the party is meant for adults, they breeze right through and nobody notices. They then trigger an alarm to distract the guards, and they make their way to the elevator and change. Why did they do a suit-up montage for their party clothes and not their robber clothes? They would have been way cooler. Even Batman and Robin had a suit-up montage. <sighs> missed opportunity. Since Maddie got exposition from her mom's laptop, they pretty much breeze right through everything. <laughs> Green light. And Austin hacks the cameras in like two seconds. Great, right, you guys. I'm online. Um, yes, um, uh, it might be a bit difficult. Um, I have to hack into his private company account. It might take some time. There we go. <laughs> Maddie and Gus move on to the safe, and the movie turns into Indiana Jones for some reason. Holy. They use the safe deposit boxes and her dad's climbing equipment to make it up to the safe. Her gear gets stuck, and she remembers how her dad climbed Mount Everest, and she free climbs the rest of the way. Then she crosses over to the safe. She accidentally triggers the safe's security timer, and she needs to figure out the code. Since her mom designed the safe, they figured out that her mom must have chosen the code. She used my name! My name is the code. It's weird how the movie is making this heartwarming. She figured out the code so she can rob it. They forgot the safe needed an exit code so everyone realizes that the bank is being robbed. Brad teases Farrell and lets them get away, and they make it to the hospital after losing the cops. Maddie's mom immediately figures out that they robbed the bank since they only stole $250,000 from a safe that holds over $20 million. Then the movie pisses me off. The mom tells everyone that it was all a test to check if the system was ready. And to prove to everyone just how vulnerable the bank was, I had my daughter and her two friends, three kids, rob the bank. And then everyone comes to the go-kart track the next day after seeing them on the news and gives a bunch of donations for Maddie's dad. Because of course they would. Everyone loves her dad. The whole bank robbery was completely pointless. The movie ends with Brisbane getting fired for trying to blame Maddie's mom for the robbery. The bank gives them the loan for the surgery. Her dad gets all better. The end. The kids don't get any sort of punishment. The gang went on and on throughout the movie about how they're going to be in so much trouble. You understand what happens if we get caught, right? We go to jail forever. Like until we're 21. Maddie, we are so grounded. Say goodbye to my Xbox, my iPod, my go-kart. Gonna have to take out the trash, do the dishes. Massage grandma's old feet. I wonder if we can finish the 8th grade in prison. My mom's gonna kill me. They knew it was wrong, did it anyway, and then the adults were like, Aw, you poor thing. You did it for your daddy. That's understandable to have some money. Her dad even thanks her in the end. Thank you, mom. What is this message? Were the filmmakers pissed at their banks, so they made a movie about kids robbing a bank? The movie could have been a heartwarming story about a girl and her friends raising money for her dad's surgery. What was the point? Why does this movie exist? Sorry about that, I tried to think logically about a kid's movie.
Let's move on to my rating. Catch That Kid has the tropes of an early 2000s kid movie without any other charm. There were bits of the movie that were enjoyable to watch, but the movie's inconsistent tone really drags it down. There were hints of a better movie with the kids being skilled at various things, but they used their skills to commit crimes. Kids robbing a bank and then not getting any sort of punishment for it is a really troubling message for a kid's movie. It was nice to re-watch it and see how the young actors got their start before they moved on to bigger roles. But that's pretty much the only reason to watch it. There were a couple characters that I enjoyed watching, but it wasn't enough to save the movie. Catch That Kid is a forgettable product of its time, and it should stay forgotten. Two stars. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really does help out the channel. Also, let me know in the comments if any of you guys have seen Catch That Kid. I was wondering if anyone else has seen it or had it on DVD like me. If you'd like to join me on my journey of watching all of my bootleg DVDs, make sure to subscribe so you know when I upload a new episode. There will be new episodes every month until I watch all of them. Now let's add Catch That Kid to the stack. They're on a mission. Release the dogs. Run. Without permission. My mom's gonna kill me.